You just got an interview invite for your dream job, but it's in a week. Don't panic. This seven day plan distilled from my personal experience hiring at Amazon and Coursera, as well as my experience as a one-on-one -on -one career coach will help you prepare effectively, even under some serious time pressure. Let's get right into it. On day one, you're going to research the company strategically so that you know exactly what you're walking into. You need to understand what does this company actually do? What are their main products or services? Who is their audience? What is the competitive environment like? What are their technical constraints? For example, are they dealing with massive scale? Do they need real-time processing? Is this the kind of environment where experimentation is possible or not? What metrics matter most to their business? What tools or frameworks are they likely to use? What technical domains does the team focus on? What are the company's values or leadership principles? Next, we need to research their interview process specifically. Here's where to look. Look for previous interview questions on Glassdoor, Interview Query, Blind, or Reddit. Learn about the company's or team's recent work on YouTube, Archive, or Google Scholar. Check leak code for company-specific interview lists, but you know, be aware that they're unlikely to actually ask these specific questions. It's more just a guide for the kinds of questions that they ask. From there, take all this research and make a study list. Keep this list focused because you know you only have a week. You want to dig deep on the most likely topics rather than trying to cover everything kind of superficially. One tip here, while you're doing this research, start a document to track anything that could make good questions for you to ask the interviewers. So by the end of day one, you should have a clear understanding of what the company and team does, what they care about and their core constraints or challenges, a focused list of technical topics to study, a good sense of their interview process if that's available, and some initial questions for your interviewers. Don't skip this planning day, so I know it's really tempting to jump straight into technical prep, but this strategic foundation is going to make the rest of your week so much more effective. On day two, we're going to start our coding interview prep. Since we have limited time, we're going to focus on understanding the fundamental patterns that show up in coding interviews versus getting straight into practicing. We're just not going to have time to learn through grinding. This is going to enable us to maximize our chances of being able to solve a new problem if we haven't seen it before, or if we can't solve it, at least we'll be able to have enough knowledge to explain our thinking, which can still make a good impression. There are lots of really good resources for learning DSA out there. Personally, I've had a lot of success with the Neat Code course, for example, but in this case, we can maximize our time by skipping video content and instead using written resources. So for example, Educative's Grokking the Coding Interview Patterns course would be a really good option because this way you can work at your own pace, skim what you know, and slow down for newer concepts. I'd recommend reading the concepts first and taking notes on anything you're not 100% confident about. Then return to each concept and do the practice problems. Continue practicing the areas you're least confident about each day for the rest of this guide. And don't forget to practice speaking out loud and explaining your thought process as you code the solutions. A good framework for this is the umpire method. So first, you understand the problem by asking clarifying questions. M, match the problem to patterns you know. P, plan your approach before coding. I, implement your solution. R, review for bugs and edge cases. And E, evaluate time and space complexity. Even if you can't solve every problem, being able to communicate clearly about your approach can take you pretty far. Days three to five are focused on more coding practice and preparing for case studies. Here's what I'd recommend for coding practice. Do two to three relevant leak code problems each day based on the weak points or the company priorities that you identified on day two. Practice coding and speaking out loud. Next, let's talk about case study preparation. We've already done a lot of research into the company and the role, so we should have a pretty focused list of domains to study. If you have prior notes for any of these topics, just review those. If you don't already have notes, focus on learning in the most efficient way that works for you. So for example, summarize transcriptions of YouTube videos using an LLM and then take notes about the content in your own words. Or use a written learning platform like Educative so you can skim what you know and slow down for new concepts. For example, grokking the modern system design interview is a good high-level resource to cover a lot of ground super quickly. As you learn, take concise notes that you can review multiple times. Review these notes once a day using kind of a spaced repetition approach so that you can retain the information really well. By the end of day five, you should have solved and thoroughly understood at least six to nine relevant coding problems and created a concise set of technical notes you've reviewed multiple times. Now we're at day six, and we're gonna focus on behavioral interviews and verbal presentation. On your research day, you should have learned about the company's values or leadership principles. Every major tech company has them, and they're often directly used in the interview criteria. We're gonna use this to structure our behavioral interview prep. For each value or leadership principle, think of an example from your past experience that demonstrates that value at the appropriate level you're being interviewed for. Use the star format and make sure to write down your answers so that you can practice later. For example, say you're preparing a story about a time you handled a technical disagreement and you're interviewing for a more senior role. Here's how you'd break it down. Situation. Our team was split on whether to rebuild our API from scratch or refactor incrementally. Task. 
As the tech lead, I needed to build consensus and keep the project moving forward. Action. I organized a technical design review where both approaches were presented, complete with a proof of concept implementation and metrics. Result. We ended up choosing a hybrid approach that reduced risk while still modernizing our stack. The project finished on schedule with 40% better performance. And then the bonus R, reflection. I learned valuable lessons about managing team dynamics to find creative compromises even when the issue is a technical disagreement. That's the specificity you're aiming for. Prepare one or two stories for each of the values or leadership principles, and make sure that each story can be told in under two minutes or so. Now let's talk about your elevator pitch. This is really important because it often sets the tone for the entire interview and so many people flub it. Here's the structure that I suggest you use. Where you are, where you come from, and where you want to go. So for example, where you are. I'm currently a machine learning engineer at X company where I've built and deployed personalization models serving 10 million daily users. Where you come from. I started as a data scientist building offline models, then transitioned into productionizing ML systems and handling real-time inference. Where you want to go. I'm looking to tackle recommendation systems at a larger scale, specifically working with billion user data sets and real-time updates, which aligns perfectly with the technical challenges your team is solving. That's it. Three sentences that should take less than a minute, but sets the context for the discussion. Finally, let's prepare your questions for the interviewers. This is where a lot of candidates miss an opportunity to stand out and to learn important things that you can use in the next interview. You need different questions for different stages of the interview process. For example, for technical interviews, What's the most interesting technical challenge your team has solved recently? Where do you think the team has the biggest opportunity for growth in the short, medium term, and long term? What is the culture around code review and critique? Or for the hiring manager, how does your team approach mentorship and growth? What would success look like in this role after six months? How would it be received if I tried an ambitious project and failed? Now that you have your answers, spend time practicing saying your answers out loud until they sound natural, confident, and fluid. Seriously. Clear verbal communication skills can make all the difference. Now it's day seven, your final preparation day. Today isn't about learning anything new. Instead, we're gonna focus on consolidating everything you've prepared and making sure you can access it smoothly under pressure. Do a complete review of the technical topics. Review your notes by explaining these concepts out loud as if you were teaching them to someone else. If you can find someone to do a mock interview with you, even for just an hour, definitely do it. Another engineer is ideal, or you can use tools like AI mock interviewers, or just record yourself talking to ChatGPT so you can check if you're explaining things clearly and articulating as well as you think. After you've spent the day reviewing, get a good night's sleep. I know it's tempting to stay up late cramming, but you need to be sharp tomorrow. If you're watching this because you have an upcoming interview, here's one final pep talk. You can do this. Just stick with the plan, keep your spirits up, and do your best. Or if you're thinking to yourself, what I wouldn't give to be stressed out about preparing for an interview, I can't even get an interview. Make sure you're subscribed because I have a lot of content about how to break into tech and hopefully even make the process a little bit less painful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.